Hello everyone, this is Bradley. This is a tutorial about the Pendulum Wave animation using animation nodes. I highly recommend you to watch the demo too first to see whether you will be interested in this tutorial or not. Trust me, this isn't very hard, although it seems lots of nodes. It's just a repetition of similar concepts over and over again. This tutorial will be separated into two parts. The first part is for procedural modeling, and the second part is about how to animate the Pendulum Wave exactly. The text stream will be briefly discussed at the end of second part or not. You can download the animation nodes and know more about it from the link in the description. So let's start. Because I'm going to do the procedural modeling, I basically will create everything in animation nodes. So I first need a fold input. Uh, I need a fold mask. Then, then I need a combine vector. Create a vector list. Also, then is uh, spline from points. So what I want to do is I need two vectors, one with the value on y axis and the other with a negative y value, and I put the, both of them into the list. And uh, for better visualization, I need a three D viewer. So you can actually understand what actually happens. So now I'm using single value to control the distance between all of them, which I think is very handy. And if I plug this in into the points, then I'll create a spline connected these two points. And this is the principle. So this will be our button line. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to basically duplicate everything. But I basically will plug these values. Uh, plug this value again and this time I'm also need to plug a z-axis to lift them up and if I have a, another 3d view as you can see I have additional two points floating in the air so this is the point uh, and I because I want to tilt the entire thing so I need another fold mask just kind of subtract or add in values, it's the same. So kind of, yeah, I think this is kind of good now. So this is our pendulum, basically. Uh, one thing I want to remind you, because there's, this is, although this is procedural, but as the tree grows larger, sometimes you might feel very confused about uh, what all these nodes are doing, right? So uh, I recommend you to actually coloring them give it a kind of color and uh, because it will, uh, you cannot uh, at the same time to color all of them so uh, one thing I recommend you to just to select them and uh, select the last one that has color and it goes to N and copy color then it will update color to all of them but uh, the issue of this entire thing is you cannot change color to all of them at the same time so you have to select them use copy color method Another thing is you need to disable this use network color. Otherwise, all the things will actually be reset. See, it has been reset. So this is actually very important. So copy color again. So now this is fine. Um, then I need basically curve object output. I'm only going to output with this upper value. So create a target and turn on the bevel depth. Uh, you can use a float to control this bevel depth or this kind of thing. Another thing to make all this some procedure is a viewport input node. And you can create a kind of float value and to control all this input or directly put that into socket. I personally wish to keep the original nodes. Uh, so I need to go to N and turn on the float input and turn that up. So now in the panel of animation nodes, you can see there is a float and you can control the viewport input. So in this case, I'll probably give a proper naming distance or separation. So I think this is good. You can do a lot of other things. The whole point is 
uh, now you don't need to go into node trees, you can just control everything with this panel, which is very handy. So after finish these things, uh, we need to start to instance object. So how can we actually do? Is we need a node. Uh, first I need to create our sphere because this is the entire point. And then the second thing is I need to instance them. So so far this is kind of straight idea. And I probably need a integer input to control these instances. I will tell you the reason because I need a kind of more procedural way to create all these objects. And for proper naming, I will just uh, go to copy for object. Also a reason is that if you uh, turn, up a uh, turn up a shader, like I will turn that as a emission shader, kind of orange color. Then it will update to basically all of the balls. Uh, now you cannot really see. So now I hide the sphere, everything is in animation mode. So you get kind of an idea. Then next thing that we can do is uh, instance my sphere on the location of all these splines. So the way I can do is to evaluate spline. Uh, this is very tricky nodes. Uh, its name in the menu is called get the spline or get the sample, get the spline sample. So so on and so forth. You can try to check on that. Uh, but it has been changed the name in animation or the 2.1 something like that so this is turns to be tricky so what it does is if we turn up a 3d viewer you can see it just basically adds points along these spines which can define the location for my object to be replicated so i need basically object uh, transform output goes to socket and location goes to location. Uh, one thing you need to be aware is that the integral should be the same amount as the location. So now you can just uh, increase the number of sphere. Then it will be handy. Uh, remember to actually copy the color. Or you can use the viewport input anyway. Basically, this is the idea. A uh, second thing that I need to do is to connect the hanger to our sphere. This is also kind of doable. Basically, the point is uh, simple. Uh, I need to create a loop through locations. And I also need another vector list. So create a list for up and create a list for down. So now this is the list for our sphere and I also need to create a list for the top splines location to locations and then I need to create a vector So the loop basically inputs values um, one by one from this list. So what you can see is now is that I'm connecting these two points. And if I'm generating a spline from points, and I need a curve object output. Get the target one level depth. So now this is good. Uh, one thing is, although uh, using the loop, it should uh, output many spines, but I'm creating only one spines, and uh, it will override the last spine that I created. So in this case, uh, to solve this is simple. I need just to replicate this entire spline. So object instance. and put the instances number into this socket and put the output to 
basically I changed the output into our spline target put it into object list and this ob the replicated object will go to our final output and I also please be remember to turn on this deep copy so that all the splines have their individual uh, meshes so this is the principal idea uh, I'll call this hanger Yeah, I think this is basically them. And you can change all these values, thickness. Uh, this, the entire, all these settings can be made procedural. And you copy them. Uh, if you want to have kind of different materials to two of them, uh, you can simply make another any curve, make a pass for example, and I'll call that string. And instead of copy the hanger, I'm going to instance the string. So now they have different materials. You can just work with string and the hanger is just called hanger. Sphere is sphere. And put that with uh, emission shader, kind of thing up. Uh, lots of things that you can work with. So I think this is basically done. Yeah, I think up to this moment, this is done. Uh, I didn't expect it takes only these nodes and these many times, but uh, now this is done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you in the animation part. Bye bye.